Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So there's an interesting thing that happens in Legacy of Mandalore as it relates to Sabine Wren and the question of whether she has any latent force abilities. And it has to do with her lightsaber use in the episode, which, you know, is not as dramatic and montage <laughs> and drawn out as it is in Trials of the Darksaber, which happens in the previous episode of Star Wars Rebels. We're talking about Season 3, Episodes 15 and 16 in this case. And just to refresh a point from yesterday, one of the things that Kanan Jarrus was telling Sabine Wren as he was training her to use the Darksaber is that she should consider that she is not just swinging a blade, basically, but directing a current of energy. That's how he described the Darksaber. And when you see the Darksaber move, and maybe this is just the way they decided to do the animation, or what, but there's a flexibility to the Darksaber that doesn't really exist for lightsabers. Like, the lightsaber blade is, you know, straight and stays straight. You know, of course, there are exceptions, like Vernestra Rose Whip Saber, for example, just, you know, to name one, but you get what I'm going <laughs> for with that. It behaves differently. And so when we see Sabine fighting against Gar Saxon in this episode, episode 16, that's the Legacy of Mandalore, she doesn't get the ability to use the Darksaber in this battle. It's Gar Saxon who steals it away from where it had been sitting on the throne next to Ursa Wren, and then he's about to strike Ursa down with it, and Ezra throws Sabine his own lightsaber, and Sabine's able to ignite it and block the killing blow just in time. Then the fight ensues, and it's Gar Saxon with the Darksaber versus Sabine Wren with Ezra's lightsaber. And, you know, I can't say that I recall reading or hearing anything suggesting that lightsabers behave the same way as the Darksaber does in the aspect of its heaviness and about the idea of potentially fighting against the blade and your thoughts and your actions feeding into the crystal and it making it seem physically heavier and harder to wield. I haven't heard a similar story be told about lightsabers at all. And if you have, then I'd love to hear about it. Point me to a source. If you're catching this on YouTube, hey, comments are right there. And if you're catching the audio version, head over to the blog post for this show's episode. It's episode 3299 at sw7x7.com. Drop a comment there and let me know. Either way, Sabine is able to fight with the lightsaber just as effectively as she had been able to use the darksaber during her training sessions in the previous episode. Ultimately, Sabine is able to disarm Gar Saxon, uh, not in the sense of lightsabers and darksabers cutting off limbs, but just gets the darksaber away from him and gets him to you know, be cornered and says yield. And he says, I won't yield, you'll have to kill me. And she says, well, maybe that's a Mandalorian way, but it's not my way. And so she de-ignites the sabers and starts walking away. And he tries to shoot her in the back, but Ursa shoots Gar and that's the end of him. And at that point, Sabine Wren is now officially the master of the Darksaber in that regard, but she says at the end of the episode, she's not going to be the one to wield it. She is going to find the proper person to lead Mandalore, and she's going to present the saber to them, which we know that's Bo-Katan, and that creates its own issues. But to circle back to the heart of our question, why we're talking about this episode in the first place, can we say that Sabine Wren has or does not have Force abilities as a result of what we've seen in these two episodes? And I definitely would say we can't rule it out. She could possibly have some sort of latent Force ability. We can't say that, no, she definitely doesn't. But we can't say, no, she definitely does either, unfortunately. The jury's still out. But even that much is interesting because I don't think after having watched Rebels, any of us walked away from that show thinking there was a possibility that Sabine Wren had any kind of Force abilities. And now it seems like as we go back and look at it from a certain point of view, sure, there is a possibility. And it could also be that what we're seeing is the actions of somebody in a flow state where they are so skilled and connected to what they're doing that it's almost like they're moving on autopilot, as it were. It's often been suggested that Han Solo has a similar kind of thing happening with his piloting skills, that he gets into a flow state and you could, from the outside, consider the possibility that maybe he has some latent force abilities and that's why he is as good as he he is in what he does with the Millennium Falcon, but it could just simply be 
a matter of skill and talent and practice and dropping into that flow state of performance. So we've gone from thinking for the last five years or so that no, she doesn't, to okay, maybe it's possible. And we're going to consider a couple of other potential situations that might shed some light on it too. But for now, that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it. As always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Seven by Seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.